J.J. Watt is a Cardinal. Three-time Defensive Player of the Year traded one dome for another when he left Houston, decided to go to Phoenix. The move surprised some, given the Cardinals didn't make the playoffs last year. Arguably the toughest division in football. Still, Arizona, a team with upside and could make some noise in 2021. The deal is a reported two-year contract, $31 million with 23 of that guaranteed. So you take a look at the draft notes here for his former team in the Houston Texans. No first or second round picks, of course. And for the Cardinals, they do have five picks in the draft. And their first round selection will come in the mid first round at number 16 overall. Let's bring in our NFL draft analyst to break down what the J.J. Watt signing does for both teams in the upcoming draft. And who am I talking about? Of course, Ryan Wilson of the Pick 6 podcast. So let's break down what we just saw right there, including a pick that you had for the Cardinals. But first, let's start with the Texans, his former team. Yeah, the Texans remain in bad shape, Tommy. Uh, it, the, the conversation starts and ends with Deshaun Watson, what his future holds. It certainly sounds like he does not want to be there. Uh, it also sounds like the new GM, Nick Casario, uh, has reportedly said that he doesn't want to be the guy known for trading Deshaun Watson. I guess you also don't want to be the guy known for making Deshaun Watson do something he doesn't want to do and torpedo in your organization worse than they already have. So they don't have a pick, and you mentioned this the first two rounds. They don't pick until pick 67 because of some previous trades, including Larry Mutunzel. So what do you do? Oh, by the way, you also don't have any cap space. So they're in a bad way. I think the best case scenario for them, Tommy, is to get out from under Deshaun Watson, get a boatload of picks, get some players in return, and start the rebuilding process now. Because if you wait until after the draft, until after free agency is over, after June 1, it only complicates things for you as the Texans. I say this rarely, but Deshaun Watson is one of the rare cases where an NFL player has leverage, and he has the most leverage here, and the Texans are over a barrel even if they don't want to admit it. So they have to figure it out. They have to figure it out quickly because they need to jumpstart the organization, and they're not going to be able to do it with their hands tied with Deshaun Watson. All right, how does the J.J. Watt signing here impact the Cardinals now and their draft needs? Well, they did have needs along the edge. Uh, before J.J. Watt arrived, so that certainly alleviates some of that. Yes, Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt are both north of four, uh, 30, north of 40, that's me, uh, Tommy, so they can still play at a high level. That's the great news. Chandler Jones was injured last year. J.J. Watt did play, but he played on a really bad football team. I expect he will be revitalized once he arrives, much in the same way uh, that, that we saw uh, the wide receivers that came over from Houston, and I'm sure that had something to do with the arrival. So what, what do the Cardinals need now? Well, they need help at cornerback. They need help at wide receiver. We'll see what Larry Fitzgerald does there. Uh, I had them taking Patrick Sertan in the middle of that first round there, and they could certainly still do that if he's available. There's a chance he goes in the middle of the round, so he could go a little early, perhaps a little later. But if he's there, that's certainly someone you target. I don't think you take a wide receiver this, this high. They do have other players there. You go defense first, even with the addition of J.J. Watt. All right, so let's move on to sort of the tag theme here. We played a game with our... Jason Lock and Ford, their team should tag or not. What we're going to do with you is take a player and say, let's say that player is tagged. So what does that team then do? So let's first start under that premise right now. We'll go with the Chargers and Hunter Henry. If they decide to tag him once again, what's the plan do you think there for the Bolts? Yeah, so if they tag Hunter Henry, uh, that means in the draft they can focus on other needs. I've had them in the past taking Kyle Pitts. At number 13, the fantastic tight end out of Florida. You won't need that anymore, so what could you do? You could address the defense. Uh, Melvin Ingram is, is going to be a free agent. He's 31. You need some help along the edge uh, opposite Bosa. You could help the offensive line get better and protect Justin Herbert. And I've had players like Elijah Vera Tucker, the offensive guard slash offensive tackle from USC, who had a fantastic season uh, in 2020, going there in the middle of the round one to the Chargers to bolster no line, to protect Justin Herbert, and to make his life easier as he goes into year two after a phenomenal rookie season. Yep, he's been injured, but if the Chargers do franchise tag him for a second straight year, we're taking a look at about $12.7 million. Let's move to Pittsburgh and talk about the Steelers' Juju Smith-Schuster. Let's say he gets tagged, but that also means then they don't do Bud Dupree and some other free agents there. R-Dub, what do we think about this situation in the Steel City? Yeah, this is a long shot, and it's more likely than not that Juju Smith-Schuster is playing elsewhere. But let's just, for the sake of conversation, say they do tag Juju Smith-Schuster. They could then 
try to resign Bud Dupree. Newsflash, they have no salary cap space, so that would require some maneuvering. They also had just franchised him in 2019, coming into the 2020 season. But they also need help. Uh, they'll still need help at wide receiver. They'll need help along the offensive line. They're losing a ton of offensive linemen, some to retirement, some to free agency. They need help at edge rusher, as I mentioned, if Bud Dupree doesn't come back. They need help at cornerback. And, oh, by the way, Tommy, you might even want to think about drafting a quarterback there at number 24. I know it sounds like Big Ben's coming back. He's about to turn 39. In fact, today's the second. Today's his birthday. Happy birthday, Big Ben. Uh, good news to team might draft a quarterback to replace you. So for a team that won so many football games, the third and 11-0, they have a ton of needs, and they're going to have to address them primarily through the draft only because they don't have a lot of salary cap space. Yeah, you're looking at it highly unlikely. Plus Chase Claypool playing well, of course, as a rookie there for the Pittsburgh Steelers, making it a little bit easier if they decide not to bring back Juju Smith-Schuster. All right, we stay in the division, talk about the Bengals' potential tag impact on Carl Lawson. So he had a breakout season, and I say breakout in the Bengals sense of defensive football. He still played really well, and he'll be popular should he get to free agency. But he had five and a half sacks last year, five the year before, on a defense that hasn't been very good. The good news about the Bengals, who picked number five overall, uh, they're not going to take an edge rusher that high. They would probably do it in round two if they wanted to start there. But they could certainly trade down if they wanted to. If they're not, if the offensive lineman they want there at number five, someone like Panay Sewell or Rashawn Slater is in there, they could trade down, get more help in that defense. They need help at every level. They need more edge rushers. They need more linebackers. They drafted a couple young ones last year who maybe will come into it in their own year too. And they need help in the secondary. But they also need help most importantly along the offensive line. I think that's where their focus goes to protect Joe Burrow, who tore his ACL midway through the season after a strong start to his rookie campaign. But if you can't protect him, it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing because your star quarterback isn't on the field and his tag cap would be somewhere between 17.8 million dollars or just a shade under 18 so let's get back to pass catchers Chicago is dealing with the situation with Allen Robinson let's say he gets tagged what do we think the draft plan is out there for the Bears well, Al Robinson probably, first of all, is very angry if he gets tagged by the Bears. I think he's done with his time in Chicago and having quarterbacks who haven't been very good, frankly, try to get him the football. I think he probably wants to go somewhere where he has a more consistent quarterback throwing him the football, and I understand that. But if they do go this route, Number one, you got to find a quarterback. Are you rolling again with Nick Foles? I don't think you want to, but when you're picking at 20, there's not going to be much to choose from because those top five quarterbacks will probably already be off the board. You can bolster the offensive line. They need help on the interior offensive line. They need help at offensive tackle. You can do that in the 20s. You can get better on defense. You need some help at the safety position. Uh, you need some help with the interior defensive line as well. So there's any number of ways you can go to get better as the Bears. If Allen Robinson's staying, by decree of franchise tag, I would imagine he wants a, a new shiny franchise quarterback. Yep, and his number is $16.4 million to tag. And then let's end with Kenny Galladay in Detroit. Yeah, so Jared Goff would love this. Danny Amendola, Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones all look to be hitting free agency. If you have to keep one, obviously you're keeping Kenny Galladay. New coaching staff in Dan Campbell. Everything's new there. there the expectations aren't necessarily that high. They're, they're still expected not to be a very good football team. But Kenny Galladay makes you better. So what do you do so, around him? I think Jared Goff is certainly going to be the quarterback there. I think you can get better on defense. In the secondary, the Jeff, Jeffrey Okuda last year at number three, they still need to get better there. They get help at an edge rusher. They get help on the offensive line. Uh, one thing they don't need is a running back because they keep drafting the round in the second round. But I think anywhere you get a player will help this Lions team and help if you, in fact, decide to keep Kenny Galladay for at least one more year. I don't know if you could see it, but we had an information slider in the graphic. It was like team needs. The list was like this long, Ryan. <laughs> so certainly appreciate it breaking it down here on CBS Sports HQ. Appreciate it, bud. All right, catch him on the Pick 6 Podcast. The super friend, Ryan Wilson, John Bridge, and the host, Will Brinson, talking about who else? J.J. Watt, Emergency Podcast. Meow, 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 meow. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.